the first example of concurrent programming that we're going to see is using the fork function to create a new process. So recall that when you run a program on the computer, the operating system starts up a process for your program to run inside of. The process is allocated some memory where its code is stored. That's the code that it executes as the process runs. And then there's also some memory there that it can use as it's running. Now the fork command creates another process that's an identical copy of the original process. We call the original process the parent process. We call the new process the child process. But they're identical copies of each other. So the fork function is what creates this new process. It takes no parameters and its return value is going to be zero if you're in the new process, the child process. It's going to be the child's process ID if you're in the parent. So you'll be able to differentiate in your code, am I the child process or the parent process based on that return value? Because remember, it's identical. The code is the same for both processes. And we'll actually use an if statement on the return value to determine, are we in the child, are we in the parent? Now, if there's a problem creating the child process and the operating system wasn't able to create that, then you'll get a negative return value. So keep in mind, those two processes are exact copies of each other. All the memory in the parent process is copied to the child process, whether they're global variables, local variables of the executing function, all of those are copied as is to the child. Now, as they execute, that memory is going to change. You can modify the values of the two variables. So while the child process does get a copy of the parent's memory, once the child process is created, the parent and the child no longer share an address space. As soon as the child process is created, it's a new process. It has nothing to do with the original process other than being a copy of it. Like we said before, we'll use the return ID of the function to determine if we're in the parent or child. And that can be kind of hard to get your head around because as you're writing the code, you're thinking about, hey, I'm writing one function, but actually you're writing one piece of code, but it's going to work for two processes. But hopefully when we see the code example, that'll make sense. So in the example that we're going to see, we're going to call fork and then we'll print the process we're in and its process ID. In order for the two processes to do something that we can see happening and it'll allow us to observe the processes running, we'll have them write, display the numbers from one to some number. So the parent will print up to the number five, the child will print up to 10. So in order to keep the output separate, we'll add some tabs to the beginning of the child process so that the output will show up in two separate columns. So we'll have the parent process outputting in the first column, the child in the second column. And we'll also add some code in the parent process so that it waits to exit until the child process is complete. That's not always required. In fact, there's lots of cases where, where the parent will be more than happy to end and, and let the child continue on without it. But just to show how that works, because we'll do something similar when we see threads, we'll have the parent wait on the child. Once the child is finished executing, then the parent will exit at that point. So let's take a look at the code itself. So let's take a look at the code for our fork example. So we'll do this example using a CentOS virtual machine. And you can see here is our initial code. So we're including some stuff, standard IO, because we're going to use printf. We'll call exit when we're done, and that's in standard lib. And then this header file here, unistd, that's the POSIX header file, fork, and also sleep. Now we're going to be using sleep a lot here. This says sleep for one second, and that's because we want there to be a delay so that we can do some things while the code is running. I have a variable that I'm going to initialize to zero. I have a variable to hold my process ID, and then I'm going to display that before the fork. I'm going to call fork, and then when fork is done, I'm going to print that we're after fork, print what n is equal to, we'll also print the process ID, and then we'll exit. So let's see what happens when we compile and run this. So you can see there's a delay, and then we have one before fork, but two after forks. Because again, at this point in our code, we split off. So if I want to be able to differentiate between the parent process and the child process, then I, I would need to do something like this. The child process will have a process ID of zero. And then otherwise, we're in the parent process. 
Now we are making the assumption here that the fork worked. It could actually be negative. So now, after the fork, we check the process ID. If it's zero, then we know we're in the child. Otherwise, we know we're in the parent. And so you can see the parent process, the child process. Now, one other thing to keep in mind when you're working with concurrent programming is output sometimes is buffered, meaning the operating system will hold that output until it gets a bunch and then do all of it at once because the operating system itself is running concurrently. There's a lot of processes running in addition to our programs that we're writing. So sometimes you'll get some confusing output or it'll be mixed up and it, just something to keep in mind for future reference. I'm going to add four tabs before the child process and one tab before the parent process. And I'll print out what in is. I'll print out what the process ID is. And I'll actually do the same thing for the parent, except that I'll just do one set of tabs instead of the other. So I left off my percent D here, so let's fix that. I think I should compile it before I run it. There we go. So now before the fork, and you can see here is the parent process. And then notice you can see this after the fork, and you can tell which one those are coming from because of the process ID. So let me add a sleep here. You know, you'll notice here the parent ran and then the child ran. And that's again is because these processes take turns or one may run faster than the other. And so by putting that sleep at the end, it just makes sure that both of them wait a second before they actually print this after the fork. Okay, so now let's do something a little more interesting that we'll be able to see happening. So let's start printing out 10, or let's start printing out n, and then we'll increment it each time. So we don't need the process ID each time. Then we're gonna increment n, and we're gonna sleep for a second. And this will take 10 seconds to do because it will print 10 values. And just to make things uh, interesting, let's set n to be one here. And I believe it was initialized to zero. And so that way we'll be able to see that the two process IDs have a different starting value. So now let's take this same exact loop and I'll copy it down here again, just removing the extra tabs. But instead of 10, I'm gonna say five and I'm going to add 10 each time, just so again, we'll see a completely different set of numbers. So let's compile and run this and see what happens. And it looks like I'm missing a brace right there. So this actually only ran one time because I'm saying while well, n is less than or equal to five. So that was my original plan, but now it should be less than or equal to 50. Now, one other thing is you may have noticed I didn't get a prompt. The parent is what I was running this from. And so you'll notice the parent was exited. And so I got my Unix prompt back, even though the child process was still running because it's running as a background process. Let's run this again. And I think this will give us some more interesting input. And yeah, there you can see the parent process is now generating values. Now it's done. And again, you'll see we print out this after the fork. That's from the parent because we know because of the process ID. And then the child process does the same here. I'm not sure that this is super helpful at this point. So maybe what I'll do is I'll, pr I'll do a printf where I'll say done with parent. And I'll do the same thing for the child. And that way, everything will still be abbreviated, will be indented correctly. And so there, again, you can see it was done with the child. This was indented because when the parent process ended, it gave me a prompt. So that's sort of weird. Um, if we temporarily change this to be... 20 seconds. So the child process and parent are both running. The parent process is about to end. And so you can see there it's done. 
and it's exited. But now the child process is still running. If I do like an LS, you can see that it's running, but it's sending this output to my terminal. Well, this is really confusing. And so what I can do is I can use the wait function. And let me not forget to change this 20 back to a 10 because I don't want to sit around for 20 seconds waiting for that to exit. So now in my parent process, I'm going to call wait and pass the address of child wait. Now there's also a function out there that you can, if you want to specify what process ID you're waiting for, that's out there if you're, if you're interested, but for our purposes, we'll just wait. Wait is going to wait until a child process returns. So once that's done, actually this needs to be waiting for child. And then we can say something like child complete. In fact, I kind of like doing this with the colon. So now we say that the parent is complete. Let me look, let me actually update all the parent that way, just so that we have some consistency. I think that's good. And then we'll say this, we'll do the same thing here. We'll say that the child is complete. So now the parent process shouldn't return until the child was done. Now notice If I do a search, I can see here's some process IDs. And notice 4458, 4458, that's the child process. And with my new code, it's waiting for the child here. The child finishes up. Now the parent stops waiting because the child's complete. And so then the parent can complete itself. So that's a quick introduction to Fork. Fork is one way to write concurrent programs. Again, the idea here is that you're spinning off a completely separate process. Next, we'll see threads, which have a different approach to concurrency.